Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for intel, forecasts, and success strategies. I'm Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us. No matter where you're reaching us around the country on YouTube, iTunes, or the show website, thanks for being with us. Well, this segment is brought to you by GetValuate.com. If you want to do some investment analysis very easily on your phone or computer, check out GetValuate.com. Well, we have an exciting show for you today. We're going to talk about the multifamily market, and we're calling the show Multifamily 2018. Multifamily industry has really been on a ride. It's really been incredible, but also there's been a lot of new supply. Now we have some changes in the economy, possibly with the Tax Act. So what should we expect for multifamily moving forward? Is it time to buy? Is it time to sell? Uh, can we still build in this market? Well, let's get an idea of what what's going on. Please welcome my first guest. This is Jay Parsons. Jay is Director of Analytics with RealPage, uh, and their website is realpage.com. Jay, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Michael. Glad, happy to be with you. Well, always informative to have you on, Jay. Thanks for being with us. And so what about performance? If you look back at 2017, it seems like when I've talked to you over the last few years, it seems like every time we talk, it's like, wow, the market, the fundamentals, performance really outperformed what we even expected. So how did right. 2017 end up so far? Well, I think we're starting to see the market behave a little more like what we thought it should be doing, meaning that with so much more supply coming online, we're seeing the market uh, slow down from these record peaks that we've been seeing, particularly in rent growth. Still a lot of demand out there, but with so much supply, rent growth levels have certainly normalized a good bit. Yeah, and normalized is uh, interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a broker. I sell apartments. And, you know, if mm -hmm. I tell people, oh, you know, expect 3% uh, in rental increases a year, you know, the buyers may say, oh, that's too much. But, but what kind of uh, rate growth have you seen? Uh, well, for 2017, we saw same store new lease rent growth about two and a half percent, which, as you said, I mean, that's still a, a pretty good number. And people think about normal sometimes. They just take the average over a long period of time. They average out a recession and a, a growth period and they get one and a half to two percent. And they think that should be normal. But really, for times like now, with so much supply getting two and a half to three percent rent growth, you know, you really can't complain. These are pretty good numbers. Yeah, and these are pretty big rents, right? In some of these markets, when you look at the, the rental mm -hmm. rates per, per unit. Oh, yeah. I mean, the stuff that we're building is, is at the very high end of the market, very expensive. And so where we are seeing growth, it's generally in spots where the, you know, t the Class B apartments and apartments built 10, 15 years or more ago, uh, there's still so much room to run, run up rents because you're not building at that price point anymore. And the price point of stuff that we are building is so much higher. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And I think, you know, when people look at the apartment market, there's a, a lot of different submarkets, of course, for submarket areas and cities and, and, and suburban markets. But it seems like the bigger story might be kind of that A versus uh, B and, and even C. So have you Absolutely. continued to see uh, higher in, rent increases on the kind of B and C product? Uh, particularly B and I also say suburban class A and we've been talking about this for a while probably a couple of years now and it's you know, we always like as, as, as economists and prognosticators things work out exactly as we think and and this is an area where it's it's happened exactly as we said it would where if you're suburban class A which was generally a strategy that a lot of the institutional investors would poo poo a few years back uh, this has been the winning strategy of higher rents better demographics uh, but also you're more insulated from supply and then also in that class B strategy uh, the, 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 you you're have a, a lot of demand for those assets um, and not and obviously no one can build a class B apartment now class C is a little bit differently different you do have some affordability issues at that part of the market you're catering to uh, hourly uh, wage workers a little bit different so it's it's hit and miss depending on what market and sub market you're in yeah yeah that's a good point and uh, Jay, you do win the prize. You're our first analyst uh, in the last few weeks that used the word poo-poo. <laughs> I love it. So what about occupants? It's a big economics word. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, what, is, uh, what have you seen for uh, vacancy in 2017? How has that been trending? 
Well, you know, the good news is that it, it, with all that supply, we delivered more than four, well over 400,000 new units in 2017. We actually didn't see a big increase at all in, in, in vacancy rates. Uh, we had a little bit of an uh, upturn in vacancy in Q4, about 20 basis points. But for the year, it was basically flat. And uh, some of it has to do with the hurricanes that came in uh, in uh, the latter part of the year in, in Houston, uh, as well as in Florida. We saw a lot of demand for apartments in some of those areas. Uh, but all in all, uh, part of the story that you know everyone focused on the rent growth number and how it's come down a little bit, and all the people who've been worried about apartments are saying, "See, I told you so." But what people forget is that there's still a lot of demand out there for apartments, and that's certainly a good tailwind going forward as well. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, the large amounts of new supply that we've seen uh, in 2017. You know, our headquarters is here in Atlanta, and uh, you know it's just been crazy the amount of apartments, but they seem to be. Uh, performing well. What do you expect for new supply moving forward? Is it is the trend slowing down a little bit? Well, you know, it, it's hard to say. I mean, it's certainly market by market, but overall, um, we're probably going to be peaking on supply uh, in, in the early part of 2018. Uh, and, and part of that has to do with the fact that, you know, number one, we're running out of the best sites. Uh, but number two, it's going to take a serious strategy pivot for developers to maintain these kind of volumes and lenders to support that kind of strategy, meaning that a lot of the focus has been on these urban sites and a development in downtown submarkets with pricing going so, go, going up so high and now rent growth being basically flat for that class A urban product, it's very hard to get those kind of deals done. And so I think as we get into 2019, 2020, uh, we are going to see some, uh, some, some declines in new supply. It's certainly not going to go down to zero, but you're got, you aren't going to be able to maintain 400,000 plus units uh, annually. Okay. We're talking with Jay Parsons uh, with RealPage about the multifamily market. So, Jay, what do you expect moving forward then into 2018 and 2019? When you look in your RealPage crystal ball there, <laughs> what do you expect for performance moving forward? Well, you know, we're still pretty bullish. Our story has not changed. Uh, but, you know, what has what we continue to emphasize to all of our partners and clients and people we speak with is that this it's about segmentation. You know, back in 20, 2011, 2012, 2013, uh, anybody in the apartment industry was going to be successful. This is the nature of a rising tide boosting all ships. You could have been the worst operator or investor and you were still going to do pretty well. You know, this is not 2012 and 2013 anymore. And so what we're seeing is that, you know, in the right segments and the right strategies, you're going to be successful. So, you know, if you're uh, generally class B and A in the right kind of suburbs, you're still going to do well. We think you should be relatively bullish on the outlook for 2018 and 2019. You're fairly insulated from supply for the most part. You got nimbyism um, and also you got a lot of demand for that kind of product. Uh, if you're class B overall, you should still do pretty well. If you're in some of the late recovery markets that still aren't seeing a ton of supply and right now are starting to see a big increase in rents, I think you'll still do pretty well as well. It may not maintain some of the numbers we're seeing right now, but should still do well. Now that class A urban stuff, uh, it's been slowing for a while. It's going to remain sluggish. And uh, as you referenced, the demand has been good, but uh, it's going to be a challenge for a lot of these developers to reach pro forma rents in 2018. You're right. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the, kind of the barrier to entry. You know, don't build that uh, in my backyard. We certainly see that in a lot of markets that, that we work in. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we get back, when I ask Jay about the investment sales market, uh, is it time to sell? Is it time to buy A or B? Uh, so stay tuned. We'll have more right after this short break. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. 